station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Coming up on the news at noon, the fight for DC's criminal code, how the council plans to override the mayor and what that means when it comes to crime in the district. And so far today, it has been a very soggy one out there, but rain showers are steadily coming to an end. How much longer before it completely dries out? And when can we see our next round of rain? We'll have a full look at that forecast and an update on where those rain showers are at coming up in just a little bit. And later, Congress must make a decision or face the government running out of money. We'll take a look at what that could mean for the country and you. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the News at Noon. I'm Mark Hall, taking a live look outside. It's a wet start to our Tuesday and some showers slide through for the morning commute, as we saw earlier. And will we have rain for the evening commute? Meteorologist Damon Madsen joins us now with the latest check on the forecast. And Damon, I guess we won't see the sun today. No, definitely not, Mark. This storm system that's rolling through is certainly going to keep things looking pretty gray out there. But the question is then, are we dealing with the soggier weather all the way through the day or will things go back to drying out? Checking out that radar picture again, we've had a swath of light but steady rainfall across most of the area. That's what made things so soggy this morning. A lot of green popping up on the radar picture. But as we now progress into the afternoon, look at how that rain is really dissipating, starting to lighten up. It's pretty much dry now back across Western Maryland into West Virginia, but down across Northern Virginia, Things are improving back toward Winchester, Front Royal. We do still have some rain showers ongoing, though, to the south and east, all the way down into far southern St. Mary's County, back over toward Colonial Beach, Fredericksburg. You're still dealing with some very light rain showers as of this hour. And then back toward the district, we do have a couple of pockets of light rainfall right now moving through parts of Fairfax, Montgomery, and northern PG County, even a light shower in Washington, D.C. See, but notice how most of this rainfall is pretty much wrapping up as we speak and widening out that satellite and radar picture. There is nothing else coming in behind this pocket of rain to our west. So within the next hour, we are expecting all of the rainfall to come to an end across the entire DMV. Now the cloud cover, that's a different story. There we go. Staying very overcast this afternoon and it stayed pretty chilly so far today with how soggy it's been, but we are going to watch those temperatures climb back up at least into the middle and upper 40s, but we could also have a few spots still reach that 50 degree mark here later this afternoon. Now, as we progress into the second half of the week, do we hold on to these more mild temperatures and are we expecting another round of rainfall over the next few days? We will have a full look at that forecast coming up in just a bit. Damon, thank you. Happening now, the D.C. Council could vote to reduce penalties and punishments for violent crimes in the district. This comes as D.C. sees a long list of recent carjackings, averaging one a day in the new year. Last year, there were 485 carjackings. Just in the first 16 days of 2023, there have been 16. A D.C. Council unanimously passed a revised criminal code last year that would reduce penalties for carjackings, burglaries, and homicides. Both the mayor and police chief have expressed concerns about reducing accountability. One former commissioner for the Advisory Neighborhood Commission in Southeast has major concerns too. I walk out the door every day looking left and right going, will I be armed carjacked? Will, will somebody take my car? But while I'm doing that looking left and right, I've got the council going, everything's fine, everything's great. Only nine of 13 members are needed to override the veto. DC News Now will have more on this story coming up at 5. WMATA going back on its word, saying that service along the blue, orange, and silver line will not be impacted by a safety commission review. Yesterday, they say riders could expect delays of up to 10 minutes after 50 train operators were sidelined by directives from the Washington Metro Rail Safety Commission. This happening after Metro officials held an emergency board meeting on safety over the weekend. Well, good news from Metro riders today with no delay in Metro Rail service. This comes as tensions are running high since concerns over safety and operating training came to the forefront over the weekend. DC News Now's Lex Juarez 
talk with riders with more on the reaction to the updates from WMATA. WMATA narrowly missed having service delays today. They actually announced early in the day on Monday that they would be having delays on the silver, blue and orange lines but we're able to take that back within four hours. So riders who ride on these lines, of course, that's good news for them. And while they might be feeling some whiplash from the back and forth from WMATA, it's better than having to wait 25 minutes between trains, which is what they originally thought would happen today. All trains on these lines will come at 15 minute increments like normal. And Metro is assuring the public that there is no safety concern when it comes to the rail operators or their training. While the inconsistencies are frustrating for some riders, others say it's just part of life. Things happen, they're a company, they're a business, and because I work for a company, I'm a little more understanding, but I just have a positive attitude towards a lot of things, so I get on the train to get to work and just deal with the day as it comes. Moving forward, the Safety Commission is taking an expedited review of the process for training rail operators, and Metro also has more good news for riders. They say that they've submitted their return to service plan for the 7000 series cars, and that the Safety Commission is also reviewing that. In Washington, Lex Juarez, DC News Now. Thank you, Lex. Happening tomorrow, Governor-elect Westmore and Lieutenant Governor-elect Aruna Miller will be inaugurated in Annapolis, a ceremony scheduled for noon at the State House. The ceremony is free and open to the public. It also is outdoors, so attendees are told to dress for winter weather. Parking information will be posted soon on the inauguration website. The People's Ball will follow the inauguration at the Baltimore Convention Center starting at 7 p.m. Tickets for the main ballroom are sold out, but there are still limited second stage tickets. And be sure to watch DC News Now tomorrow starting at a special time, 11.30 a.m., for full coverage of Governor-elect Wes Moore's inauguration. Last night, a man was found on 19th Street suffering from cardiac arrest. Police say his injuries are unknown. After several attempts to resuscitate the man, he was pronounced dead. Police say the investigation continues. Developing now, traffic has resumed in the area after a man was shot in the torso on Georgia Avenue in northwest D.C. According to police, the man is still conscious. Bullet shell casings scattered across Georgia Avenue forced police to close the road in order to protect the evidence. Still no word on exactly what happened. And developing now, police in Prince George's County are searching for the suspect who killed a grocery delivery driver over the weekend. Police say 34-year-old Stephen Lee Green from Skiesville had just finished dropping off an order in Temple Hills when he was gunned down Friday. It happened on Afton Street right after 11 p.m. Police are working to figure out the motive in the shooting. Police are also offering a $25,000 reward for information in the case. Developing now, unless Congress votes to increase the debt limit, the government would run out of money needed to pay for its obligations. Washington correspondent Alexandra Lamone reports on why Republicans say they won't vote to increase the debt limit unless their demands are met. These guys are the <laughs> fiscally, you know, they're fiscally demented, I think. They don't... <laughs> They don't quite get it. On Monday, President Biden slammed House Republicans who say they'll block an increase in the debt limit unless their demands are met. When the Republicans say we're not going to pay our bills, it means that we're not going to pay people who are receiving Social Security. In a letter to lawmakers last week, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned the U.S. could hit its borrowing limit Thursday. She said the government has already started implementing extraordinary measures in order to continue paying its obligations, which include Medicare, veterans' benefits, and military salaries. House Republicans say they won't agree to an increase in the debt limit unless government spending is slashed. The Republicans were largely elected to get control of reckless spending. We hope that the Senate, how, uh, Democrats and Republicans, will agree to spending cuts. Look, this has to stop. We cannot continue to operate with these types of deficits. Democrats say Republicans are playing games and the result could wreak havoc on the entire U.S. economy. And President Biden says he's already reducing the national deficit. I reduced the deficit last year $350 billion. And this year, federal deficit is down $1 trillion plus dollars. 
More than eight months into the investigation of the leak of the draft opinion revealing the fall of Roe v. Wade, the Wall Street Journal reporting investigators have narrowed their sights on a small number of suspects. The suspects include law clerks, but people familiar with the situation told the paper investigators haven't formally identified the person behind the leak. Evan Lambert with our network news nation has more. More than eight months into the investigation of the leak of the draft opinion revealing the fall of Roe v. Wade, the Wall Street Journal reports the marshal of the Supreme Court has narrowed the possible leaker to, quote, a small number of suspects. They include law clerks, but people familiar with the situation tell the paper investigators haven't identified the person behind the leak for certain. Little else is known publicly about the investigation, and it's not clear if a report will ever be made public. The leak amounted to an unprecedented breach of court secrecy outside of published opinions, and a whirlwind of protest outside the court and even in front of Supreme Court justices' homes. Republicans expressed outrage over the leak's consequences, which included the arrest of a man prosecutors say planned to kill Justice Brett Kavanaugh. And that situation, as we all know, got real serious got real serious with the assassination attempt on Justice Kavanaugh. They've also pushed for answers on the investigation. There aren't many secrets in this town, but for some reason, this individual has certainly been sheltered, and there is um, absolutely, I think, evidence that there are specific people that know who this person is and, and why they haven't been identified at this point is beyond me. The leak and the ultimate decision to overturn Roe and leave abortion to the states has ushered in a patchwork of abortion laws at the state level. According to the abortion rights aligned Guttmacher Institute and public reporting, post Roe, 24 states have restricted or are likely to restrict abortion. Recent polls like one by Pew in July show 62% of the public supporting abortion rights in all or most cases. And that comes as several states, either through ballot initiatives or state courts, have protected the right to abortion or blocked bans from going into effect. That includes a deep red state like Kansas, whose voters chose to protect abortion rights in the state's constitution. 